John Irving, Director of Engineering for the City of Richmond in uh, BC, Canada. Uh, we're a community of about 200,000 people, 190,000 or so in the Greater Vancouver region. Um, uh, I'm responsible for the long-range planning, uh, design and construction of the majority of our civil and, and facility infrastructure, which includes roads, drainage, sanitary systems, and our diking system. We are an island in uh, the Fraser River Delta, and uh, we are um, uh, or have a significant level of, of flood threat from both freshets and, uh, and storm surge and sea level rise. Uh, although we are largely above sea level uh, on the island, we do have a diking system and a drainage and pump station system, uh, which provides protection for the city when we uh, see those events, freshets from the river and the high water levels. Uh, the system we have in place today uh, has largely been built over the last 50 years and is certainly adequate for meeting the risks and the threats that we see today, but uh, we do have a very long-term vision going out beyond 100 years now to look at uh, the effects of climate change and, and sea level rise. Uh, in that regard, um, we have developed in the last 5 or 10 years a flood management strategy, which defines these risks and defines the asset that we're trying to protect, which is obviously the built community that we have here in Richmond. We've identified now specific areas where we want to look at how we would achieve the flood protection uh, measures going forward. And right now we're just in the process of executing a dike master plan for the Steveston area. Steveston is a uh, uh, historic fishing village uh, that exists in the southwestern corner of Richmond uh, and is now developed into a very vibrant uh, multicultural and, and uh, 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 residential community. It is a little more challenging for us because the existing dike and flood protection infrastructure there is very hardwired with the built environment. So we've hired uh, Delcan, DHV. This is a, a partnered Canadian and Dutch company. Uh, they have done some previous work for us on our, on our master planning uh, and strategic uh, flood protection development. They're doing this piece of work for us now while we're looking at specifically the Steveston Harbor area and the adjacent areas on, uh, on the West Dyke and looking for solutions in terms of how we would start building that flood protection infrastructure, specifically the dikes and the pump stations, in a manner that would address our needs going out 50, 100 years and beyond. There's some really significant options that arise out of that. Historically, again, uh, relative to the Dutch experience, our flood protection infrastructure here is, is quite small. We already have dikes that are in the order of, of one, two, three meters high relative to the surrounding land. Not terribly significant uh, impact there to, to uh, the functioning of that surrounding land with regards to development or other uh, community uses. Uh, when we start looking at meeting uh, the demands going out in the long term, you start looking at more of the Dutch example where you have very significantly sized dikes of, of an order of magnitude greater uh, and other things like uh, sea gates and sea locks and things like that. So we're certainly uh, leveraging the experience, the, the Dutch experience through uh, things like the previous workshop we had and of course engaging consultants like DHV. Certainly, uh, uh, looking at Holland, there's areas where um, they're starting to use, uh, or doing less land reclamation and looking at having more of a porous boundary with flood protection. And that's something we want to try and achieve here. We have sturgeon banks going out several kilometers into the strait from our west dike. Uh, and we're starting to recognize that as much as that's uh, a very strong environmental asset for the city, it's also providing us a lot of protection uh, from wave run-up and storm surge. So that's something in the long term that we would perhaps want to identify specifically in that regard as having a flood protection benefit, which it hasn't had to date. The dikes are mainly built for flood protection, but not for gaining further land for uh, to extend a harbor or something like that. What, what we know from from Holland, for example, obviously space is not a problem here as we have in Europe. We are facing a bit more of a space crunch in the context of the North American or Canadian experience. Uh, you know, 
Vancouver has the border, the mountains, the river, we have the ALR, so in terms of the available land for um, residential, industrial, commercial development, uh, we are limited. Uh, certainly in Richmond, we've seen ourselves max out. It's not certainly quite the European experience, but there's really no uh, virgin land left in Richmond. The development we see now with regard to, which is mostly residential, but certainly a lot of commercial development in the downtown area, is all redevelopment. People are buying uh, single family homes or older industrial land and turning that into higher density uh, residential and commercial. Now, the protection against flooding, did it come from, is it, uh, was it some, what kind of decision was it? I mean, uh, did something actually happen in the past that Where, where we decided, okay, let's let's do something here? Yeah, the, uh, there's, you know, in the past, the more recent uh, significant event was 1948. We had a very, very large flood in the Fraser River. And uh, prior to that, there was a significantly lower level of flood protection in Richmond and in other places up and down the Fraser Valley. And that experience certainly triggered an awful lot of, of provincial funding. And, and uh, it was a result of that experience that uh, got most of the dikes and flood protection infrastructure to the level it's at now. Most of the dikes were built shortly after that period, and most of the pump stations that support that infrastructure were built through the 60s and 70s. We're just getting into a, re a replacement process with that infrastructure right now. Would that mean that, that we could have some sort of an event happening as we had in, in, in uh, New Orleans? No, we're a completely different situation in New Orleans. L large parts of New Orleans are, are significantly below sea level, and there's no part of Richmond that is actually below the mean tide level. Uh, if we didn't have any dikes at all, uh, you would see some minor flooding at a very high tide level, and of course that would recede as the tide went out. So it would, effectively we're kind of in a high tidal zone. Most of Richmond's at about one meter geodetic, geodetic elevation, which is a meter above the average mean tide level. Mm -hmm.